<laughs> Dr. Maestra, um, if we look at the situation at the Ukrainian-Russian border, the big question arises of what if. What if Russia actually invades the Ukraine? What if there's a cybersecurity attack? Or what if this tense situation continues for months? Um, what do you think are likely scenarios in the future? So I think ambiguity is the main instrument uh, of, of Putin's policy, so that we don't know what, what will happen. And this increases his bargaining position for negotiating a new European security order. Um, I think it's very unlikely that there will be a major attack on Ukraine. So I don't think it is about the whole Ukraine and Kiev. I think it's just too costly. So I think the, the most likely military scenario is about uh, land bridge uh, uh, to Crimea, water supply. So it's about enlarging the territory Russia controls in Donbass um, and maybe also to the, to the southern coast or to the coast of uh, on, the, on the Black Sea region um, uh, until uh, or towards Odessa I think that's that's a that's a likely scenario um, worst case scenario would be more but I, I don't think so and I think I think even uh, and if you follow the Russian discussions at the moment there's a lot of criticism also from uh, from uh, military experts from ha from former militaries high-ranking militaries that that it's make no sense to or it's just too costly to attack Ukraine. So I think it's still a likely scenario that there might be no attack on, on Ukraine or there might be just this hybrid warfare which we have. But I think it might be a combination of both. So hybrid warfare in a, in a smaller war um, in Donbass, I think it's, it's the most likely scenario. Okay, thank you. Annalena Baerbach commented on the Ukrainian-Russia border crisis that nothing less is currently at stake than peace in Europe. Um, what's your take on this depiction by Baerbach? So I think we have a really we have a, a, a rift a bit of the perception of the analysis in the U.S. and in in, uh, in many European member states, including also Germany. I think in the U.S. Uh, the discussion is about this is very likely that a war will happen, yeah? And this is really about shifting, changing the security order in, in Europe. I think in Germany uh, and also in some bigger EU member states, it's mainly about Ukraine and accommodation maybe also of, of, of Russia, which might be possible. Um, uh, yeah, so, but I... Um, I think this is about, so Ukraine is about the European security order, yeah? This is a, this is a fundamental uh, shift in the Russian policy uh, towards Germany and, and the European Union. Uh, Putin has the impression that this is a good timing for, um, for getting, uh, get, getting compromises from the US and also from Europe on, on European security. Um, and, and I think uh, that he wants really to change the post-Cold uh, War security order. He wants to have a signature um, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, um, uh, yeah, about uh, uh, spheres of influence, and I think that's that's really a major issue. Okay. Um, Olaf Scholz will visit the Ukraine on February 14th, and then go on to Russia the day after. What do you expect from these visits? I think it's first of all good that finally Olaf Scholz travels to, to, to Kiev and also to Moscow, that he really engages also as a chancellor, I think, in this major security crisis in Europe. Um, I don't have high expectations, to be honest. I think he has to earn also some respect uh, in, in Moscow. Putin does not know him personally. I think he has the dossiers and uh, he, he knows a lot of things about uh, Olaf Scholz. But I think it's it's important that France and Germany and the US together negotiate here with Russia and, and try to, to bring Russia into a uh, into a bargaining, yeah, into a in, uh, into a diplomatic process. But I don't have any big expectations that Putin will will give some concessions at this point. I don't think so. Thank you very much for granting us this interview. Pleasure.